Hey, what's up team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. <laughs> As you can hear, there's a lot of construction going on. I just moved into my new place and uh, also at the end of the year, there's just tons of construction in Japan. So it's something I gotta deal with right now. I'm still trying to figure out like where I should film, if I should go outside and do it or whatnot, but today was not an outside day. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. I hope that it's still audible and I'm gonna do my best to fiddle with the settings there. So, now that that's out of the way, <laughs> the, um, the video series, this little chain quest that I'm going to do now, it should be about 8 to 10 videos, is going to go into the neurology uh, behind the different types. And it's my understanding based on Dario Nardi's work. I'll link below the, the book that you can buy that has, you know, a, a bunch of his work from before. It's kind of outdated now, I guess, is what he said. But um, there's a new one that just came out as well that gives kind of a, a support expansion pack to it. But um, I would definitely suggest reading that first book uh, if you're interested in this at all because it's I thought it was really interesting and I read it like maybe a half a year ago or so and just kind of let it sit for a while but here we are I'm going to do a video on it and hopefully I can cover all the stuff because uh, it's my understanding of it okay I, I'm not a neuroscientist so <laughs> neuroscientist is definitely something that I am not Okay, but I will give my best uh, efforts and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to start with the FI types, the introverted feelers, INFP and ISFP. The other videos will cover the other kind of types based on the cognitive functions and their groupings. Uh, so he defines the introverted feeler types kind of at the top of the page as uh, listen with your whole self to determine what's important. And that is a very, very good explanation of an introverted feeler. Uh, introverted feeling is based on your own personal value judgments and your assessments of those and kind of what sits right with you, what's authentic to you. And it's a decision-making function, so it, it kind of helps build that structure it's an internal decision-making function as well. So it builds that structure to help you kind of make decisions. And um, I'll explain in this video kind of the overall idea and then the flow state and then the, um, the differences between INFP and ISFP in this neurological kind of way. And like I said before, I'm going to just kind of go briefly over this stuff, as in not as in-depth as somebody who has spent their whole life researching it could do. But the, uh, the kind of surface level is really helpful as it is. So first of all, um, the introverted feelers engage brain regions, um, all of the brain regions that deal with voice, words, and sound. So they're just really, really listening with their whole body, their whole brain rather, um, as I just said. And it's, they're, all those regions are just there to specifically pull in different kinds of information related to the speech and voice and sounds and tone and stuff like that. So when we are listening, um, we're just able to kind of enter this this flow state and it the flow state is this bright blue um, visualization of it um, through the, the device that he uses the EEG um, and what it is is basically all of the brain regions are in sync they're all vibrating at the same level and it's it means you're alert, but you're also relaxed and open to new information, um, at least for the introverted feelers. And so 
you are going to be able to pick up on the the tone of voice and stuff like that and the the different nuances of the words used as well as be ready to kind of either change your your understanding of something or kind of adapt yourself to deal with the other person um, and this is like a, it's a holistic state basically and it's like I said it's ready to just pick up on all these different little nuances and things like that and uh, I've always thought of myself as a really good listener uh, my mom would disagree I guess <laughs> but um, I've like as I wrote in the post below that I'll link as well um, there's this kind of like running joke between my friends and I that I can listen to two different conversations at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I can hear the birds screaming outside, as you can too. But um, it's more of like, I'm able to just, I feel that I'm able to take in all this verbal and tonality based information at the same time and still remain able to like react to the world and, and kind of just um, embrace what's going on right but I'm, I'm always listening to different conversations at the same time when I'm talking to somebody maybe this will sound rude I don't know but uh, when I'm talking to somebody I'm also listening to the other conversations that are going on around me and listening for like key words or, or things that could be about me um, living as a foreigner in Japan, you kind of, you get talked about a lot and, you know, a lot of times it's good, a lot of times it's whatever, but, um, so I've always kind of got that other ear open just to listen and try to figure out what is going on around me as well. And I do think that this relates to this bright blue listening flow state, um, in some way. I don't know. I, I do listen all those different things that's all I'm trying to say <laughs> and I think if you're an introverted feeler you also can relate to that probably um, whether you think you have really good active listening skills or not you know that could be just your opinion of yourself and not giving yourself enough credit um, but uh, also living in Japan I think has kind of helped me in a way too uh, because you have to respond to everything that people say um, by just uttering words, just saying yes, yeah, I know, okay, yes, really, yes. It's just this really active, engaged listening that maybe has, has kind of helped my skills in this area, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, also, okay, so that's been covered. And I want to go back and talk about the different brain regions that help us do this. And first of all, there's FP1. This is up in the front of your left eye. This is my left eye. And um, it's, these brain regions are used by everybody. Um, it's just an emphasis on like which ones are, are more myelinated and which have that like easier processing time and are, are just preferred basically so um, the FP1 region is used really heavily by judges and even as an INFP or an ISFP you are actually a dominant judger your first your dominant function is an introverted decision-making function so um, this is a very important region for the introverted feelers and what it does, uh, Dario Nardi calls it the chief judge or the captain. And what it does is it helps you explain and decide between options. It gives, uh, like when you're trying to explain this is why I'm doing this, and you're giving the reasons for that, that FP1 region is what's activated. And it's, it's trying to like filter input as well and also just explain the reasons for doing something. Um, I imagine it like, um, like the captain of a, a spaceship or something like that. And he's, he's the one that's going to make the final decisions. 
and he's going to um like you you can't debate it when he's decided this is what we're gonna do that's what you're gonna do there's nothing you can debate about that and i feel that that's kind of what the fp1 region is it also um, has an emotional component that i'll go into um, after hopefully <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll hit on the emotional components of all the different regions after I go through this explanation. So that helps you make decisions and explain and decide your reasoning, things like that. Um, when we are listening, especially INFPs, um, we have this we, we have this kind of ability to listen for a longer period of time stereotypically than the ISFPs. Uh, this is according to his research. So we could get into this flow state mode and stay there for like 10 minutes, which is pretty incredible to be in a flow state for that long. Um, and the ISFPs, you know, they kind of, they listen and then attack and then listen and attack, right? I say attack in, in a neutral way, okay? So they take action in some way. Um, but the FP1 region is going to kind of stay at this low energy, I believe, and just kind of not really active until you're ready to make a decision. And so you'll be listening, listening, listening. When you finally like decided, that brain region activates, makes a decision, and then it, it likely locks into it. Um, so meaning that the introverted feelers when we do make a decision it's going to be a long holding long lasting decision and that definitely uh, resonates with me <laughs> um, because you know i don't really make decisions when i have the choice like i'll just kind of and yeah, whatever's fine just let other people make the decisions but when i do actually make that decision it's very hard for me to change um, and this could be light decisions like where to go to eat or um, like these high value based decisions of like how do i feel about whatever racism or something like that <clears throat> um, and it's very difficult to change from that so I believe that that is what the FP1 region is doing when it kind of locks on for the introverted feelers. Um, another region is T3. Um, the T3 is, it helps us listen and speak. And it's looking at fine speech. I'm sorry, the, this region, he calls it the um, precise speaker. And that's what it's doing. It's listening for like the fine details and helping you speak um, by forming like complex sentences and looking at the different like nuances. Um, one example he gave was he stayed at the house versus he stayed here. He visited her house. So stayed and visited are very different, but they have like this, I mean, they have the same idea, but the nuance under that is, uh, could be taken in many different ways. And at the house and at her house are also something that this T3 region is listening to. So it's kind of taking apart the, the words and breaking it into different um, understandable pieces. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so going on the T4 region is um, used to listen not to speak it's it's just a listening region and it's um the intuitive listener is what he calls it it's used to listen to motivation and hear intent and also look like search for audibly search for intent so when somebody's talking you're trying to figure out like what is the real reason behind them saying these things right? it's listening for that motivation um, and to do that, it also uses voice tone. So uh, you could say like, I th the example he gave was, I love you. You could say that in many different ways. Um, yeah, I love you. Or 
I love you. Like it, it can have all these different um, emotional attachments to it and different like weight based on that. Um, and what else? Let's see. It listens for the word context. Like I said, when you're listening for the, the tone, you're also going to pick up the context that they said the things that they said. Um, and this kind of helps you detect uh, phony speaking. So if somebody's making a joke or being sarcastic, it helps you deal with that and helps you pick that up. Um, I have <laughs> I have an ESTJ friend. Um, so his inferior function is introverted feeling. Could be a coincidence, uh, but he never picks up on that. Like, he'll never know if you're being serious or not. And uh, if he's watching, I apologize, but it's true. Um, so this also, this region, the T4 also, uh, helps you listen for different words that resonate with you. Key words that just hold a lot of value for you. Um, he gave the example of like a musician and the word music or my music. Right, that's going to kick in that region and, and make it, uh, I guess, work a lot more. Just kind of, that's where it's focused. Um, for me, uh, if I hear, hear the word games, you know, I'm probably going to light up a bit more than uh, other people. And this also is based on, you know, your past and stuff like that. It helps kind of solidify the regions. But also, like, uh, as I was explaining before, I live in Japan and I'm a foreigner. And there are a lot of Japanese people, right? I don't know the exact percentage, but it's like 99 point some percent is Japanese, right? So when people see me, they call me a foreigner, right? When they're describing me to other people, right? So the word uh, is gai kokujin. Gai kokujin, breaking it down means out or like outside country person. And that word's not necessarily a bad word if you just look at the word itself. Um, but there's a, an abbreviation where they just cut out the word koku, which means country. So it's just gaijin, it's outside person. And uh, for a long time it didn't bother me. And after experiencing some racism in, in Korea and Japan as well, it was uh, kind of stuck with me. Maybe that FP1 region activated and it made a finalized decision about how I feel about that word. Um, but uh, whenever I hear that word, I, I definitely perk up and I'm like, okay, well, what is this person actually saying? And what's the intent of it and whatnot? Um, and I, I swear I can pick that word up from like a mile away. <laughs> Um, so I think that's that's kind of my experience with that T4 region finding words that specifically resonate with the the user. Um, also, another region that um, the introverted feelers use a lot is uh, F8, which is the grounded believer. And that helps you recall exact or literal details, as well as evaluate um, people and things based along a spectrum of good and bad. Uh, so you're listening for values despite of the context um, and recalling that information. I kind of had a problem understanding this region because it seems kind of contradictory and I know he he explained it a little bit in the book and I can't quite remember it right now but um, basically your values are attached to the literal details of something and then when you recall that um, it doesn't matter what the context is you're going to stick with whatever your your past values and exact literal details have have kind of solidified into. Um, I'll maybe I'll look it up again after this and try to give another little explanation below. And also 
um, because we focus on all these regions that I just talked about, um, we tend to have low uh, activity in the logic based regions like F3, the deductive analyst, uh, which is if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. It's kind of this linear understanding and deducing of information and also backtracking and stuff like that. Uh, F4, the witty classifier, he calls it, it's classifying two different things is X A or B. He says, is a dolphin a mammal or a fish? you would use that region, the F4 region, to understand that. Um, and yeah, I don't think I really tend to classify information too much like that. Uh, I just kind of let him let things go. I'm like, yeah, this color is, it's blue, but it could be any shade of blue. I don't know. It's blue though. Um, and P4, the strategic gamer, is to balance I guess, I guess to assess risk and reward, the pros and cons of something. And let's look at the other couple regions that he said um, introverted feelers use. O1 or zero one is the visual engineer. It helps you kind of break apart things um, visually, like a chair. You can take it apart in your mind and see like where the different pieces would go. It's uh, very specific. In, in, unlike the zero two region, which is the abstract impressionist, which is a holistic understanding of like, is this a beautiful picture? Is this landscape composed beautifully? Um, C3, the fact store, factual storekeeper, um, controls the right side movement and also recalls um, facts and details, which I think would be heavier, um, heavier, -li -li -li. <laughs> it would be used more often for INFPs. Um, and in the example he gave, it was. Um, I feel this way because our tertiary function is introverted sensing and recalling batch memory is something that <laughs> introverted sensing does. And last, the C4 region is the flowing artist. It helps control the left side. It's holistic. It helps you move rhythmically, rhythm, rhythmically, rhythmically. And uh, I feel that that's more of a ISFP kind of thing. And it was. Uh, but that was, he just gave a couple examples. And so depending on your past and your culture and stuff like that, it's going to change uh, a little bit. You're going to probably develop different regions. Oh, that sound is awful. Um, okay. So I've got all those out there. And now to talk about the kind of emotions tied to those regions, because I do feel that they're important. Sorry, I do feel that they're important. Um, is the FP1, that frontal, prefrontal cortex uh, region, regulates uh, negative emotions. So when you're using it, you are happy. And I find this very interesting because, you know, if you make decisions, you actually get more confident from my understanding. Like just by taking action, you feel better about whatever it is and it, it kind of helps you remain happy by not introspecting and what I was saying before is the INFP and ISFP but um, kind of heavy on the INFP here will listen for a long period of time right and then they'll make a decision I think that kind of like locks in whatever decision to your authenticity so like if you if you're like I don't like this you've made that decision and you actually feel happier about it because you've you've activated that region you've made a decision and you're happy um, I know that there's like the stereotype of introverted feelers being really like emo and stuff like that especially INFPs 
But um, I don't know. It's interesting. Make more decisions is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Even little ones. Um, and the T3 region regulates sexual behavior. I'll let you think about that one on your own. But um, the, what is it? The less activity, the kinkier you are. And introverted feelers tend to have higher activity in this region. Uh, <laughs> T4, uh, it deals with hostility and anger. When the frontal regions are not able to kind of process whatever they do, the emotion is, um, and it kind of gets overwhelming, I guess, the, um, the T4 region will activate and will make you angry or hostile. And I can see that too. Um, you know, when you're not making decisions, then you tend to kind of, um, you sit too long on it and you just, you don't feel good and you gotta make those decisions. And if you don't, you're gonna get more angry. It's something that definitely I deal with as an introverted feeler. Um, and especially as a type nine, if the Enneagram is sitting on these, this anger and these emotions and not letting them be expressed. So I think that that could have a, an interesting connection. If you get some ideas, please comment below because I'm interested in it, obviously. And F8 deals with modesty and rapport. This is that grounded believer helps you recall exact details and um, evaluate based on a spectrum. Interesting. I've always tried to be modest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I really am or not now that I'm saying that. Okay, so um, last up, some more um, explanations of the INFP and ISFP. The INFP Dis, even though it has um, these regions activated a lot that uh, I was just talking about, it also kind of goes into something that the extroverted intuitives use, which is this Christmas tree pattern is what he calls it, which I'll explain obviously in more detail in the extroverted intuitive video down the road. Uh, but it's basically, it has your brain uh, activated and lets it kind of bounce back and forth between all these different regions trying to pick up stuff uh, void of the context like just trying to ping different areas and and understand what's going on through analogies and just picking up different contexts different ways of looking at it um, so that's another another kind of pattern that the INFPs can get into and also we use the F7 region a bit more than the ISFPs and this is the imaginative mimic or quick analogizer <laughs> that word always gets me um, and basically it's it's what I was just saying it helps you kind of play out things uh, through different contexts but this Christmas tree pattern is is different in the sense that it's a whole brain uh, pattern but the f7 region is just used more for um imagining things in different contexts uh rehearsing things mentally um asking what if or when you say like maybe this the maybe uh procs that region <laughs> um it also helps with empathy and i feel that as an infp i am very empathetic and I'm always trying to look for the different contexts and the different ways of mentally rehearsing the other person's situation and trying to relate it to something I've had in the past or an experience I've had in the past. And I think that definitely has a lot to do with empathy. The ISFPs um, don't use that Christmas tree pattern. They use the tennis hop, uh, which is this low energy mode that's just kind of like bouncing between all the different regions and it's not it's not that high energy that's going to give you a hangover 
uh, like the uh, extroverted intuitive side. It just got really dark. And um, this tennis hop mode, yeah, it's, it's just this low energy. It's kind of like keeping a car on idle instead of just turning it off all the time, like at every stoplight. Because if it's running a little bit, it's easier to get going and it's easier to respond in crisis moments and things like that. Um, the T6 region is the purposeful futurist. It helps you project timelines and predict the near future. Extroverted sensors definitely need that and they do that, right? I mean, they're trying to understand what's actually coming at them in the near future and respond to that through like a gut instinct type thing. And um, also I believe, I mean, it feels like it's connected uh, to introverted intuition because it also uses symbols and that's a very NI thing is to kind of imagine the future in symbols and imagine different things in symbols. It's not a, a uh, spoken style, it's images. I think that is about it for this video. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of things that I didn't explain or touch on, but uh, what are you gonna do? It's a lot of information and this video is pretty long as it is. If you like this, if you want more information or uh, just have any questions, right below. I'll do my best to explain based on my studies. And like I said, buy his book. It's a good book. <laughs> it helps you understand things, which is a good thing. All right, anyway, so in the next video, um, I'll explain the extroverted feelers neurology and um, hopefully I can deal with the sounds a little bit better. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck, have fun. Peace.